This is a short presentation on the history of the National Negro Health Week. After emancipation, African-American health conditions were very poor. In uh, early 1900, tuberculosis was killing African-Americans three times as much as white people. African-Americans were also dying uh, at higher rates of both malaria, syphilis, and hookworm. Uh, white females by 1910 were living to be 53.6 years on average, while African-American females were only living to be 30. 7.6 years. White males are living to be 50.2 years, and African American males are living to be 34 years. And African American infant mortality was twice as high as the national average. In 1904, Monroe and Florence Work, Monroe, a sociologist and Florence, a school teacher um, in Savannah, Georgia, created a health movement for African Americans. By 1908, uh, Booker T. Washington had hired him for Tuskegee Institute as staff, and Monroe took the alumni office and changed it into the Department of Records, which became the second oldest archives in the country, and he also started the lynching record. In 1913, the Negro Organization Society of Virginia set a cleanup day for African Americans, where 130,000 African Americans whitewashed buildings, discarded refuse, and cleaned homes, neighborhoods, community buildings, and grounds. By the next year, they uh, increased that to a full week. That same year, 1914, at the Tuskegee Institute Negro Conference, Booker T. Washington announced that 45% of all Negro deaths were preventable that there were 450,000 Negroes seriously ill all the time, costing $75 million, and the sickness and death was costing Negroes over $100 million. Because of this, he joined with, with uh, Margaret Mary Washington, his wife and also lady principal at Tuskegee Institute, and Monroe and Florence Work, and called for a National Health Week. And they joined with the National Business League, and professional African American <clears throat> African American organizations in medical, nursing, educational, religious, and business fields, along with fraternal organizations and civic organizations. At Hampton Institute, Dr. Robert Moten, along with Dr. W. A. Avery, uh, said that sunshine, hot water, soap, brooms, whitewash, trash barrels, that these are important weapons in fighting the Negro death rate. So on April 11th through the 17th, 1915, um, they started the first Health Improvement Week. They got support from the National Urban League and also the Anson Phelps Stokes Fund. They got, it was received with uh, much enthusiasm and publicity and participation by the community across the country. Could this be the thought that Booker T. Washington had in Black Health Matters? Uh, they formed committees throughout the country in each community. Uh, these included an executive committee, a supplies and materials committee, finance committee, cooperation committee to get more partners involved, special day committee to have special themes each year, a speakers committee to bring in more to do lectures, publicity committee to get the word out, and clinics committee to bring in health professionals to do a special outreach. There was also a Tuskegee Institute Coordinating Committee with two purposes, one to provide uh, guidance for the local coordinating committees around the country and to publish a Health Week Bulletin. The purpose of the week was to stimulate the people as a whole to cooperative endeavor in cleanup, educational and specific hygienic and clinical services for general sanitary improvement of the community and for health betterment of the individual family and home. There were uh, seven days of activities, including uh, Mobilization Sunday, which started in the church, kickoff rally. They had uh, to build excitement. They had music and singing. They also had uh, health topic sermons. And also they presented the schedule of events for the week. The next day on, health, on Home Health Monday, they had home cleanup, 
They focus on personal hygiene, nutritional diets, sanitary surroundings, adequate ventilations in the home, caring for the sick and shut-in, and sickness control and treatment in the home. On Tuesday, they had Community Sanitation Day, which focused on clean water, safe milk supplies, food supply safety and pre preparation, uh, paved streets and roads, septic tank checkups, and also working with the local boards of health to get them involved. At the bottom, you see that they're clearing and uh, draining a swamp. On Wednesday, they had special themes, uh, which uh, included health surveys. They also did poster contests and special lectures, uh, which focus on that theme for that particular year. Uh, they, they also had radio broadcasts and award ceremonies in the community. Some of the themes included health exams or year-round health work and also increase in exercise. Thursdays, the focus was healthy adult habits, adult nutrition, maternity health, uh, men's health, annual checkups, recording family health history, and also senior health care. And then Friday was donated to the children where they had school uh, in-school events. They would uh, construct playgrounds, also improve the bathroom facilities there. They would have songs and games with health themes, also essay and poetry contests on health, and then health and nutrition projects, as you see in the middle picture, where the boys are displaying their canned goods that they created. Then Saturday was an all-community day where they had community building uh, uh, cleanups and repairs. They'd uh, fix up the grounds on the community buildings. They would clean the, clear away the uh, refuse and hazards, such as abandoned uh, automobiles. Uh, they uh, screen in windows to keep the insects out. Rodent and insect exterminations would be done. They increased the ventilation in buildings, had parades. <clears throat> they had uh, healthiest pageants. Uh, which instead of beauty pageants, they would try to see who the healthiest was in the community. And they also had uh, recreation and a celebration, as you see in the picture at the bottom. The, the week ended uh, back in church with a report and follow-up Sunday where local leaders would assess the week's activity. They also started to plan for next year and do their reports. They had uh, cooperation uh, certificates to um, congratulate the uh, different partners that came together, and they also did uh, newspaper articles and radio reports. In 1922, 129,350 people participated in 15 states. By 1939, over 2 million participated in 35 states, and in that year, 300,444 outhouses were built or improved, 51,000 208 pest exterminations took place, 102,113 uh, homes were clean, and 457 radio stations and uh, uh, programs carried the National Health Week address. In 1921, they began getting support from the Julius Rosenwald Fund and the United States Public Health Service. In 1932, the United States Public Health Service provided permanent office space for Negro Health Week activities. And they got more um, health professionals involved that started promoting the use of pharmaceuticals, clinics, and health institutions and facilities. In July 1934, the United States Public Health Service created the Negro Division and they hired clerical and stenographic uh, assistants to work there. This uh, was for the purpose of uh, direct, direct, um, direct assistance for the Negro Health Week and by preparing materials and a quarterly bulletin. They would also promote year-round conferences and also uh, do lectures on African-American health. As a director for the program, they hired Dr. Roscoe Conglin Brown, who was a dentist, and he, he became the education specialist and the director for the Negro Division. They started getting professional health organizations 
to join in, including the Tuberculosis Association, the American Red Cross, local, state, and federal departments of health, and they focused on screening, treatment, and education. In New York, the Negro Health Week actually helped to in, uh, get housing codes enforced and also to increase workplace health and safety and to get uh, safe food and drug policy in place. By 1950, they transformed the Negro Health Week into the National Public Health Week with, uh, through the United States uh, Public Health Service. And the Negro uh, Division blended into the Negro, into the uh, Public Health Service. And the Negro Health Week became the blueprint for the operations of the United States Public Health Service. The Assistant Surgeon General at that time, Robert Olson, said that it is the hope that the benefits of National Negro Health Week may be made available to the white population as well. So let's see how effective this was. I said uh, in 1915, at the beginning, black women were living to be 57.5 years. However, by 1950, they were living to be 72.2 years. Black men started at 37.5 years, and by the end, they were living to be 59.1 years. Thank you so much for watching.